Okay, so this video is about me freezing my fingers off. It's so cold today. I've gone from mild autumn to freezing winter in, in one day. Anyway, I chose today to be outside to work on the car. It is sunny. Anyway, uh, swirl pot. Uh, swirl pot to a basically an XUD, so an indirect diesel, VE, Bosch pumped, fuel injected, indirect diesel engine. These are the bits you'll need. You'll need a swirl pot, some fuel pipe, some fuel clips, a fuel filter because I'm going to change the filter at the same time, and of course a pump. Um, because currently inside the car, in the tank, is something that looks very much like that, but without the pump in it. Um, it's just a pickup. Uh, okay, so let's go and look what we're going to do and why we're going to fit it. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear this because it's so windy out here. Off and disappear. So it's a VE Bosch pump, or as we call them, a V Bosch pump, indirect diesel injection. Basically, it's got veins inside it that creates the pressure inside the pump. The veins also scavenge, so um, the fuel is just basically a little pickup in the tank and it just sucks it up through the lines, through a filter, into there. So, what we aim to do at this point now is basically reduce some of the problems that it has in bringing up. Um, obviously it has to take some of the energy out of the pump and affects the advance, many other things. So the shorter distance this pump's got to scavenge fuel from and the less resistance, basically the better. So the way we're going to do that, and I don't think it's been done before, I'm not going to name the bloke that's come up with the idea, because if it goes wrong he doesn't want to know about it, is fit a swirl pot. Now basically what this does is create a little reservoir of fuel within the engine bay, much closer to the fuel pump, sorry it's so flipping cold, um, basically we can put a pump, this, in the tank, we run it then through the filter, so the filtered fuel goes into this, and then uh, you take the bottom pipe into the fuel pump, the return from the fuel pump into one of those, and then that goes back to the tank. So basically you've got filtered fuel in a little pot there, ready to go, all the pump's got to do is take it from a theory. We've got to make sure that the swirl pot isn't particularly under pressure so the fuel in and out from the tank is the same so that it creates just a natural basically fuel, bottle of fuel. Um, these pumps don't do well with having positive pressure put in them it really messes up the timing. So that's the theory. Um, now I did have a fuel filter down there that might still stay down there. I'm trying to basically look for a location like this. We're worried it might get a little bit warm. It's a nice alloy so it will deflect the heat nice away as in it won't warm up too badly, but we might need to put some cooler in line. But the only little spot I've got is down here, which is a bit of an issue, because obviously there's an exhaust manifold right there. But at the moment, that's the only place, and I want to run the fuel lines up through there, through the cabin. So I think we'll make a little bracket, and we'll fit that in that corner there. Now, if it is getting a bit warm, we've obviously got a direct access to the front here to put a cooling duct, and of course we have the options of fitting uh, a fuel cooler as well at some point if necessary, which is quite a simple system, just some copper pipe basically, with cold air feed. Um, and that's the plan, and then obviously we can run some fuel lines. So the first job, I've lost my fuel lines, is basically to run, to fit a bracket, to fit that on the bulkhead, that's why I've had to move some of the Arduino control stuff which will move across, and then run some fuel lines through the car to that, plumb it up to the fuel filter I think, because I want to leave the original lines there, that if it goes wrong we can just revert back to the old system basically. And then, uh, we're, it's as simple as that, I've uh, already checked the wiring inside the car, uh, so it's got a positive, there's two pins there, the outer pins are for uh, the level of fuel, which runs off the float here, and then the inner pins, one's an earth and one's a 12 volt live constant, we're going to put it on a little switch eventually so I can just control it myself, again if there's any problems I can just switch the fuel off basically, um, it won't stop the engine but It'll stop fuel flowing. Uh, might be a little bit of near a bit of mobilizer issue. Uh, oh, I'm losing my words. I'm so cold. I can't feel my hands. Like let's get on with it. Okay, so uh, we're at the point where we've got a visual position for our fuel filter over here. Two bolts uh, we're holding now. Two holes done. Uh, Swirl pot is bracketed in. I had a different idea originally, which is why I asked these. But we'll leave those on for now because 
you never know where else it might end up. I was originally going to stick on this basically, but I got my dimensions wrong annoyingly, more because I don't fit enough sensor in there. Anyway, so here's the plan, is at the bottom here, that will go to the VE pump, over there, go around the engine bay. This top one, that one, will go back to the tank. This one here will come from the fuel filter there, and the pump will, uh, line will come through there into there, and then that top one there is the return from the fuel pump in there somewhere. It's going to come around. That's the plan. So now that's all jigged up, I've put basically we're going to move the N75 over there, and that's the resistor which needs cooling, so that'll go on there. Once those are in place, I'll fit those up, make sure the wiring's tidied out of the way, and then I'll start uh, cutting holes in my bulkhead to start putting fuel lines through. Right then, um, we're now in the sun, so a bit warmer. Uh, update. So we've plugged the old fuel lines, but we've left them there just in case this all doesn't work. We can refer back to the old system. Put a new fuel line in. This will be a supply from the swirl pot. Goes around there. Cable tied to the strut brace. I was going to think about going through the strut brace. Of course, if I need to remove the strut brace, I need to pull the fuel lines out, and that could all be a bit of a nightmare and a mess. And then we've got the return from the fuel pump, which is down in there. Goes up through this 8mm because it's 8mm to start with, and then just need to convert it into 10mm, and they come around to here. Uh, so uh, we're in the back here now. Um, so this is the usual pickup. Uh, it's got a float on it and just a filtered pickup. If you see a previous video, uh, I'll show you how to clean one of these, but it's not going to be really important now for me, even though I did clean it the other day because I'm putting this. It has got a little filter in the bottom of it, which I have taken it all apart and cleaned it out and put it back together. Basically, it's a direct replacement, uh, so that will sit in there like that, but obviously inside like that, and the plug goes straight on. That's going to be the pump coming out, and that's going to be the return. So I'm just going to remove those three, but I'm not going to run it underneath the car. I've cut two holes in this sort of inner lower bulk head. There's two layers actually, so it'll take you a while to drill through there. So I started with a small drill, stepped up, and then it moves to one of these. Um, not really the right one I like using. I like using a better stepped Christmas tree, but it did the job because I can't find the other one. There we go. And then just obviously stop that the metal edges will be rubbing on the pipes. We've put in one of these little rubber sort of grommet style things, which are great for when you're cutting holes in metal and sticking a pipe through or a brake line that you don't want it to rub on. A bit like down there on the brake line down there. So um, we'll put the pipe through there, uh, the in and the out basically, or I should say the out to the pump, the return and they'll come through and plug into there. So the next thing we need to do is put two holes in the bulkhead over there and then run the pipe right through and then we can switch this. Okay everyone, so um, it's looking more like a work of art down there now. Um, simply put, we've got fuel here coming from the tank which goes into the fuel filter. Then from the filter, it goes into the swirl pot. From the swirl pot and the bottom, the V pump, Draws scavenges fuel, which goes along there, round into the pump. The pump's done with it, or has excess fuel. That comes back round on the blue pipe, which goes, hang on, in there. And then any fuel excess, obviously because it's pressurised, will just flow straight back to the 10mm line, straight back through the bulkhead, and then the two lines run through there, along there, down there. Wiggle, 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 and then over there. Right, so in here, um, the fuel lines are going to go through these two little grommets there, through a second bulkhead into here. Um, I've unplugged the two current lines, I've blocked them, and I've tucked them kind of down here somewhere. And um, we're going to need that again. And then I'm just tap this ring round. And if I can get that ring out, that'll be useful. That to one side, and the pump to one side. I get diesel everywhere. I, I can do this one handed without making an absolute mess. Just so I've got a nice dirty rag. Note, nice Egyptian white cotton towel. Thank you very much. Right, here we go. And then we've got the float. And there's all that diesel. Not lose as much as possible. Because it's not that cheap. I will be curious as well because I only cleaned out the strainer about a week ago. So I'll be curious what I find in the bottom of there, again. So it's clear on the outside, but... 
few nerves on the inside there. The stream looks pretty good. Anyway, right, so then the next step is literally let's not break it. Get our pump. This is basically an identical unit, it's just got a pump in it. And that should fit in there. This is where I find it doesn't fit. I think it will fit. I'm gonna need both hands though, because the rubber uh, lip just needs switching. Right then, so that's our lift pump, our low pressure pump if you're on HDI system. There's our two fuel lines coming in. This one's our return, that one just sweeps in nicely. Um, but because of the angle and where I could put holes in the bulkhead, etc., what I've done with the high pressure side, um, sorry, that's low pressure, um, a return, this is our s supply, so it goes out of here and loops around. So that there's, I say there's no kinks, and in particular that's a kink. Um, yeah, so it loops around so that there's no kinks. If I'd obviously just come in here, there's going to be a nasty kink in there. Um, so that solves that quite elegant, I kind of think. Kind of looks cool. Plus, obviously, you can see the fuel lines running and the air bubbles, etc. Right, so we're not going to put the cap on yet. The next test is to get the ignition on and see if we can prime the fuel system. Let's hope so. <laughs> right, so the system's running. Hang on. Did you just hear that? The mic back around. So, the system's running. So, you see, there's no air bubbles coming out. We've got no leaks this side, which is good. And we've got fuel coming and going. Now the important thing is there's no major fuel pressure supply going to the VE pump. Now if we have a look at this pressure system, this is our fuel coming in. It bled beautifully out the top there into the swirl pot. Now it went straight out the top there and started coming up this return. But because I've got the return from the VE pump basically just slightly higher than the swirl pot, it means it'll never return down the return. And I've also got this little loop, again, it comes up above the point in the swirl pot, which is what I was hoping. So what that basically means is that the fuel system's pressurising the swirl pot, but it's not pressurising the pump. Now, there's a negative... Oh, okay, it bubbles then. There was a couple of leaks we've had to fix, but they've gone now, thankfully. The slight problem we've got now is obviously priming this. I wasn't sure if it would actually just prime the system but I'm happy to put a primer bulb in line now, which I'll do, um, because ultimately that's that's fine, that's not a problem, it's a one-way valve in there anyway, and that's how it's... So I was kind of hoping to get away with without having that, that it would, but I'm, I'm happier that it's not pressurising this and it's going to muck up my fuel system on the pump, which means basically, when I go to start it, once I've primed it, it should work perfectly fine. Here we have it! So we'll go for a bit of a test drive, hopefully everything will be okay, uh, but we put the uh, primer bulb in place down here, this cable tied it up, make sure it's not going to touch anything, and we managed to get that big, that big air bubble that was over there. No air bubbles at the top. You can see the air returning back, or the fuel returning back, which is fine. And then the old air bubble just flicking back, just as it's fully priming yet. No little dribbles. Oh, there is one. So I'll just uh, give that a little nip up, I think. Get rid of that. And, uh, and then we can put the cap back on in the back. In there, put the cap on that, and we're going to take a test drive once I've cleared all that rubbish up. Right, folks, let's go through drive. Not run anyone over as we come out of here. Let's go. Thank you. 